Welcome to Playing Above the Line, where we interview entrepreneurs, business owners, and community activists to get their thoughts and perspectives on leadership. Playing Above the Line is sponsored by Aviso Group, a business consulting and accounting firm focused on preparing clients for the future through innovation and positive growth. Welcome to another edition of Playing Above the Line. Um, I'm Alan, your host, and we're excited to be here for another for another great episode. Carrie's across the way, got her uh, parka on. It must be cold in here, but we're gonna we're gonna heat things up for you, Carrie, because we got a great guest today. Um, our guest today is Chris May. He's the co-founder and chief insuring officer of LTN Insurance. And so, uh, Chris, we appreciate you being here. Yeah, man, I'm happy to be here. Thank you guys for having me. So, let me start off by asking you because you've got a little bourbon here about LTN. So, LTN stands for what? it stands for Love Thy Neighbor. Love so thy that okay. is a obviously a biblical reference that right. uh, we I call it our purpose statement. I don't really like the word mission statement because I feel like mission is kind of something that you're always shooting for. And I feel like a purpose is kind of something that you do every single day. But I say that our purpose statement is that we exist for the purpose of loving and serving others through insurance. Okay. That's very good. Very good. So that's a great segue into what we're talking about, which is leadership. And so um, one of the things that you, we sent a little pre- pre-episode questionnaire out that you guys kind of fill out for us. And one of the things that you wanted to uh, kind of focus on is servant leadership. So t- what is it about servant leadership that's so in- important to you? And what, what appeals to that, to you about that? I feel like the type of leadership that has made the biggest impact on my life is not the leader that necessarily leads from a mountaintop and is always telling you, hey, go do this. Hey, go do that. The leaders, in my opinion, that have made the biggest impact on my life are people that have led from the muck in the mire, if you will, Mm -hmm. the people that are in the struggle with you that are saying, Hey, look, I went through this. This is how I was able to manage it. Or this is what I would do in that situation rather than just giving you a checklist. Hey, go get this done. I don't personally feel like that's the best way to lead. I feel like the best way that you lead is by locking arms with someone and looking to meet their needs and help them. I mean, ultimately at the end of the day, if you are a leader, your job is to work for your people. It's not for your people to work for you. That's a great insight. So in founding uh, LTN Insurance Services, first of all, how did that come about? And and then secondly, who kind of kind of been your uh, been your influence, maybe or, or, or a mentor or maybe an example for you as you've as you've kind of stepped out? Because I mean, let's be honest, anytime you go out on your own and uh, you start a new business, I mean, that's kind of it can be scary. I mean, it's exciting. Um, you have to have a support network, network, I would think, for that kind of thing. So um, talk a little bit about that, the genesis of LTN uh, Insurance Services and who maybe has been some influence uh, on your life in getting there. Yeah. So I originally, when I, I played football at South, and when I came down here, all I ever wanted to do was be a head high school football coach. That's all I ever wanted to do. That's what I was going to get my degree in, got into college, goofed off a couple of years, and that degree quickly changed from education to exercise science, which was pretty much the same degree just without the teaching side of it. Um, So shortly after getting out of college, I got into teaching and coaching and quickly realized that that was not for me. Um, I just, I kind of came in with the wrong mentality of I'm going to be the cool teacher that, you know, can just be friends with the kids. And you you can't really do that, um, especially when you're teaching middle school. So they they ran all over me and I did a terrible job (laughs) for for lack of better words. But anyways, then I decided, hey, I'll get out of this and I'll get into some form of sales. Athletes always go into sales, right? That, that's what I'll do. <laughs> so I worked for an advertising company for um, a short period of time. And again, kind of quickly realized that that wasn't what I was going to be long winded for. And one of my mentors, um, Mark Rudd, called me one day and said, hey, man, are you happy where you're at? And I said, no, I'm not. I'm actually looking for a new job. He said, well, I know a guy that owns an insurance agency. Would you have any interest in interviewing with him? I was like, ah, sure. You know, out of respect for you, I'll, I'll go sit down and listen to what he has to say. And I met the guy, Andy Malone was his name. He's a, owns a farmer's agency over in, um, Fairhope. And I, um, came to work for him. And in that time I was kind of in the process of trying to figure out exactly what I wanted to do for a career. So it came down to, I was either going to go to barber school and open a barber shop. I was going to get my real estate license, work for a real estate brokerage for two years, then open my own brokerage, or I was going to go into insurance. I couldn't get over the strictly commission hump of real estate. So we had just had our daughter. Our daughter was about two months old and we would have had, you know, enough in savings. They say you got to have, you know, roughly six months worth of savings. We could have maybe stretched it to them, but I didn't really want to put us under that stress. Mm -hmm. And then for the whole barbershop deal, you you have to either go to barber school or you can do an apprenticeship. And Mm -hmm. if you do an apprenticeship, you basically work for $10 an hour for a whole year. And I was like, well, my wife's staying at home. I want her to still be able to do that. There's no way we can do that on $10 an hour. So I stepped into insurance and that's what I thought I was going to do for forever was work for, for Andy. I absolutely loved working there. That was my um, kind of plan and goal when I took that job was this is where I'll be for a really long time. And about six, maybe to, nah, I'd say probably nine to 12 months in, I kind of got that itch to start my own business mm-hmm. or to be 
you know, the, the one that kind of created something at, at some point again. And then I, I kind of went through the process of interviewing with some other insurance agencies because I, I felt like insurance is what I wanted to do after I'd been there for a little while. And then um, I, I met two guys, which are, are actually my uh, business partners, the other co-founders of LTN Insurance. And we kind of sat down and got to talking and kind of shared them the idea of what I wanted to do. And they were like, let's do it. Um, and I was like, wait, are, are you serious? Like you guys really want to move forward with this? And they said, yeah, when, when do you want to start? I was like, uh, now? And like, yeah, okay, let's do it. So they, you know, we, we started the process of business license and everything. And then once we kind of got all that, uh, settled and situated, I sat down and had a conversation with Andy and worked there for about one more week and then rode off and got started with LTN. We got started in, uh, let's see. November 4th, 2019 was our first official day. We mm -hmm. were open for the month of October, but okay. I kind of took that month to just find office space and find, you know, how we wanted to, to manage everything. That's a neat story. And I, and I do want to, a couple things I want to touch on. So first of all, circle back. Um, look, my wife's a middle school principal, so I get the whole middle school kid, you know, situation dynamic and that kind of thing. It's not for everybody. But one of the things that you say in we ask a question, what, in your opinion, what is something that you think makes someone a good leader? And, and one of your answers was humility and willingness to admit wrong, take responsibility. I would submit to you that, that you kind of took that to the ultimate level when you graduated with the degree, wanted to be a teacher slash coach, started doing it and realized, I mean, this is not for me, you know, I mean, so I think self-awareness is, is a big part Absolutely. of, is a big part of what plays into that. And so, um, obviously that's in that you think that's important as well. Self-awareness and, and ability to not just do something because you said you were going to do it from the beginning and you can't admit that you kind of messed up. Right. For sure. I mean, I think that taking responsibility for things is extremely important. I mean, kind of the same thing with, you know, looking back on that teaching experience, uh, look back and can say, man, there's a lot of things that I did really wrong and really bad and wish that I could go back and kind of change from that. But I mean, for me, it's just kind of wearing that and saying, Hey, you know what? Like I, I messed that up and we're all human. We all make mistakes. And I feel like anybody that's made an impact on my life as far as a leader has come to me and said, Hey, this is where I made mistakes. And ultimately that's where I really learned the most from is, is from making mistakes, you know, mm -hmm. and learning, Hey, that's not the way that you want to do those things. Like I got asked a question one time, are you a good loser? And I feel like that's such a tough question because everybody wants to say, well, no, because I'm ultra competitive. Like I hate losing more than I like winning. But at the end of the day, I think that you can learn more from losing than you can from winning, because if you do what you're supposed to do, winning is going to come like it's going to take care of itself. But it's how do you avoid those losses and how do you figure out, OK, this is how we did that wrong. How can I take that, be self-aware enough to realize that I made this mistake because I did something wrong? It was a character flaw that I had. It mm -hmm. wasn't putting the blame on some other employee or somebody made this mistake. No, ultimately it's my fault. How can we fix this? How can we change this? And how can we move forward? What well, are you a good loser? I like that question. I'm going to have to use that. It's um, a difficult question. Yeah, I feel it, because everybody wants to say, well, no, I, I hate losing, but at the same time, like you can learn from losing. Well, it's all about, I mean, uh, we work with a consultant, Sandra Wiley, who says fail forward. So it's, yeah, I mean, if you fail, thing. it's okay to fail as long as you learn from it. So it's kind of that same, along that same vein. Absolutely. Um, so Andy Malone, was a mentor of yours, someone you, you admire. You also admire. You also mentioned a Donald Miller and Rusty Roberts. Talk about them. What what um, what about them? Do you do you admire? Have you learned? Yeah. So Donald Miller is the guy that started Story Brand or Restory Brand Marketing, and okay. I just love everything that he he has a podcast. Um, I, it's slipping my mind what the name of it is, but I'm sure you can just Google Donald Miller and find it. And I just love the aspect of the the whole Story Brand thing is basically make your consumer, make your client the hero of the story. They're the one that's ultimately making the decision. It's not your job to quote unquote, sell them. It's your job to educate them and allow them to make a good decision. And uh, all his just marketing stuff. And I just really enjoy listening to his leadership and the way that he kind of communicates things. Um, I think that communication is ultimately one of the, I think that that and humility are the two best okay. traits of any leader is the ability to effectively communicate to your team or effectively, even in marriage, effectively mm -hmm. communicate with your spouse. Like that's ultimately what leadership comes down to. And I think he does a fantastic job of that. Andy Malone is my former boss. I worked for him for two right. years and just working under him. And I, my job title in that role was not learning leadership from him, if that makes sense. Like my job <laughs> yeah. was to be, you know, the sales, re yeah. sales rep for our uh -huh. company. But man, I just learned so much from him and just the way that he treated employees, the way that he treated me, just the, the trust that he, that he gave me and kind of allowing me to manage things the way that I wanted to manage things within how I kind of marketed myself and 
just his character, man, just spoke so highly to me. And, and especially just in that transition of, I mean, I, I left his agency to go start an agency, a direct competitor. Right. I mean, our offices are less than a mile apart. Okay. So just the way that he has handled that, his character meant a lot to me in that transition. And then Rusty, uh, Rusty Roberts is a professor at the University of Mobile. And then he is also a pastor at uh, the the church that we go to. Mars Hill is the church that we go to. Mm-hmm. And he was the college pastor during my time at college. And I think that his servant leadership, you know, that's kind of something we were circling back to at the beginning right. is something that really made an impact on me because he's not – and he would tell you this, like he's not the kind of person that's going to give you some rah-rah speech or anything like that. He's just the kind of guy that's going to come alongside you and kind of mentor you in a doing life together, you know, as cheesy and cliche as that sounds, but just to just to do life with you and, and ask you how life's going and sit down and just kind of be a part of your life rather than up on a mountain dock. Right. Well, and one of the qualities that, that you mentioned uh, that you thought made a good leader was the desire to see others succeed. So, I mean, ultimately – don't you think that a leader is one of the one of a leader's um I guess charges is to grow other leaders, right? Absolutely. So if, so if you're a leader and you're not making other lead, other leaders, then then something's kind of philosoph- uh, philosophically maybe wrong with your what you're doing. A hundred percent. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think that that's your job as a leader is to build up and grow other laborers, other leaders for for whatever industry that may be in. You mm-hmm. know, whether if that's pastoring a church, you want to grow other people that are discipling others, or whether that's for me, like I want to hire people and bring people on board that would love to eventually start their own agency or, or do something like that. I absolutely think that that is a trait of a leader that is extremely important because ultimately at the end of the day, if you're in any leadership capacity and you have anybody working with you, for you, however you want to term that, their success is your success. So if they succeed everything succeeds. And I, I think that, you know, the the best leaders are the ones that will take the spotlight off of them and put it on the people that are actually doing it. Because in a, you know, quote unquote, business owner or entrepreneur, whatever words you want to call it, mm-hmm. like ultimately your people are the ones that are getting the work done. You're just the one that gets to be the face of it. Absolutely agreed. So talk a little bit about your team then at LT Insurance Services. I mean, how many folks do you have there on the team? What does that look like? So currently it is just me as far as the insurance side of things. Okay. Then I've got the two business partners that kind of help me with the back end of things. Okay. Granted, we are still brand spanking new, just mm-hmm. opened the doors in November. Right. I'm looking to hire um, somebody right now. So if you're listening to this and would like to, <laughs> to get into the, the insurance industry, feel free to give me a call. But we're looking to, to hire and maybe bring on two people relatively quickly, but I want to make sure that they're the right people. Expand on what, what, on what makes the right person. Because yeah. We talked a little bit about this a couple of episodes ago with, with a couple of folks. And I'm, that's one of the questions we haven't really asked up until this point, but I am interested in what you as the leader of the organization thinks is the right person. What qualities do you look for? That's a great question. Um, for me, I could care less if you know a thing about insurance. Like uh, there's three things that our agency is built on. It's love, character, and efficiency. If you love people, you have high character and you're efficient, I can teach you everything else. Like okay. I could care less about that stuff. I mean, there's some people that look at things differently. To me, like there's, I would rather take the intangibles than the the tangibles. If somebody's, you know, got a great sales track record or something like that, that's great. But if you don't love people and you don't fit culturally with what we're trying to build in our agency, then that's great. You you know, you can go work for somebody else, uh, I guess is the best way to say that. But I think that the the best way to find people to fit your organization is to hire off of what are the core values of whatever your business is, whether that's an accounting firm and then an advisory firm or whether that's insurance or whether that's a marketing firm, what is your, what does it ultimately boil down to? What's the purpose of your business and hire people around that and everything else will kind of take care of itself. I like it. I like it a lot. Um, so LTN has been in existence since late 2019. You just talked about having a purpose and a vision. And, and obviously I think communicating that to your, to your team, once it gets in place is very important. So when you do that, when someone asks you, okay, if I come to work for you, what's the LTN going to look like in five years? Uh, what do you what do you tell them? Man, that's a great question. There, there's a lot of things that I hope it looks like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, obviously you can't get, I mean, if the crystal ball is working, you'd be able to tell us, you know, specifically, right. but uh, what, what's your what's your hope? Yeah, I, you know, obviously I would love for us to grow. I mean, at the end of the day, like we, our purpose isn't to just quote unquote sell things, but we are a sales organization. Like you, you do have to sell insurance to, to pay the bills as as they say. But um, at the end of the day, man, I just want people around us that care for people. Like that's it. I would love for us to have a couple of different locations just because we're all the way down in Fairhope. And sometimes it can be difficult to serve people in Mobile if you're all the way in Fairhope. So I'd love to have two locations eventually, maybe one over here in Mobile or Gulf Shores. We'll see, you know, that's 
a little ways down the road, but I would love to hire somebody and bring somebody on if, if I'm looking back in five years that took them from point A and helped them get to point B that they could be the one that runs location two uh, of LTN insurance. Um, that would be my goal. Obviously, like I said, I, I would love for us to to grow and and have people working for us. But ultimately for me, I think the the biggest thing is that I just want to bring people around us and help them grow and give them an opportunity to do that. You know, whether that's if they, you know, want to be a business owner or if they want to be a, a leader or a manager, you know, I tell my wife this because she's polar opposite of me when I was kind of looking and trying to figure out what I wanted to do or if I wanted to, to you know, start an agency. Mm-hmm. But my wife's like, I don't understand any of that. That's cool. You're passionate about it. She's like, I don't want to worry about any of that. She's like, I want to work eight to five and be done. I'm like, hey, I get that. That's not what, you know, fuels my fire, if you will. And I'd love to hire some people on both ends of that spectrum. Somebody that is young, just out of college and is looking for an opportunity to grow into management or mm-hmm. to grow into something like that. Ultimately, at the end of the day, that would be what would be successful to me is hiring people and putting them in the right place and helping them grow. I got you. So have you always had that kind of entrepreneurial itch as far as as long as you can remember? Is it something that kind of developed later in life once you kind of got out of college and realized that the whole teaching and coaching thing wasn't for you? I mean, how did that come about in your own life? I've kind of always had a little bit of a leadership itch. Uh, That's something that I've always enjoyed doing. I mean, even in high school, you know, of just you know, and a lot of times in high school, if you're one of the best guys on the team, you're going to be a captain. Like, mm-hmm. it's just kind of how it ends up being. But I kind of always found myself in that role. I always enjoyed that. Um, when I got into college, I, like I said, I always wanted to teach and coach. And ultimately, I mean, at the end of the day, if you're a head coach, you kind of are a, a business owner. Right. Like, you're running an organization. Yeah. You're the CEO of XYZ High School. Um, but the the actual like business side of it never really clicked for me until I read a book called Shoe Dog by Phil Knight. It's his memoir of how he created Nike. I mean, he literally went from selling encyclopedias door to door in Hawaii to partnering with um, I think the name of the company was Onetsuka, which eventually became Asics. And you know, he was selling their shoes out of the back of his truck or the, out the out the back of his van in California, and then eventually it became Nike. And I'm the kind of person that it takes me a while to read a book. I enjoy reading a little bit and I'm much more so a podcaster Mm -hmm. now, Um, but um, it it takes me a little while to read a book. And I read this book in like three weeks and it normally takes me like a month and a half, two months to read a book. And I was staying up late at night reading it. I just couldn't put it down. I just loved the, the story of it and just kind of the, the pursuit uh, of getting to, you know, and accomplishing a goal. And that's really when that itch started for me. That's when I was kind of in that process of figuring out, Hey, Teaching and coaching isn't what's for me long term. I was kind of in that process of just trying to figure out what avenue I wanted to go. And that that book was what jump started it for me. Gotcha. Well, that, now that we've had a lot of people mention a lot of books over the past 60 something episodes. That's one that has not come up yet. So uh, I appreciate that. It's a really interesting book. I mean, there. I'll be honest with you. There's not really anything that I necessarily learned um, from it as far as like a business owner or as far as like a leading and teaching aspect. Mm -hmm. It was just the story of it. He does have one quote in there that I absolutely love. He said, life's about growth. You either grow or you die. So that's the one thing that I took from the book, but it was just the story of just, he just just has a really neat story. Um, I would highly suggest anybody reading it just to, just to see where they came from, uh, you know, regardless of your feelings of of Nike and what Mm -hmm. they support and all that fun stuff today, but just the story of how they came from nothing to something is really cool. I'm going to put that on the list. I appreciate that. So, well, let me ask you this. And you you kind of alluded to um, the fact that you always kind of had that leadership itch. So leaders, and we can apply this to entrepreneurs as well. I think it kind of goes hand in hand, but um, so leaders are, do you think that they're born or are they made? This is such a good question. Uh, When I saw that on the little thing that you sent over, that was that was the one that stumped me the most because I feel like they can be both um, okay. and not to give you, you know, a super political <laughs> answer there, but I feel right. like you can have people that grow into leaders, but I feel like that, that itch is something that you're born with, mm-hmm. I guess, you know, there's people that have to learn to, to grow and evolve into a leadership role that may not necessarily be a leader, but because people look up to them, they have to fall into that role. So that's where I would say that you can be molded into a leader. But I think that that, I don't even know a word to describe it. That 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 it factor is kind of something that that people are just born with. That you just kind of gravitate to them. And I I wouldn't necessarily consider myself one of those people. That I know some guys that I'm around that I'm just like, man, like I just want to spend time with you. Like I don't, mm-hmm. I just want to learn from you. You know, um, I think that people are born with that more so than molded into it. Yeah, and I've asked that. I don't ask it to, to every guest, but I've asked it several times, and and really that seems to be most people kind of 
land where you are. I mean, they think it's kind of a hybrid of of the two. I mean, people do have that kind of whatever, and you can't really describe it that, but that it factor, that you know, charismatic type personality or whatever, where it, it kind of makes folks want to follow them. But also, there there are skills that can be learned as well, with, absolutely you know, through, through what you listen to or what you read and 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 that kind of thing. So that's uh, that's good. Okay, so you mentioned that that you didn't you don't necessarily see yourself or, or, or think that you have the the it factor. Well, another guy that was on a couple of episodes ago um, made a comment that he didn't really see himself as a leader, but he was. I mean, clearly he was, and I think that's um, that seems to be a common thread. I think uh, among a lot of good leaders. I mean, I, you know, some obviously see themselves as leaders and that kind of thing, but I think more so than not, people who are in leadership in a leadership position don't don't necessarily see that in, in themselves. And so why do you think that is? Because I think it's interesting. Yeah, that, that that's a good point. You know, to be honest, I've never really fully thought through that. Um, I, I think that I do definitely have the talents of seeing a vision and helping people get to that vision. Like that's something that I really enjoy doing. Um, but I, I wouldn't necessarily say that I personally have that just like gravity that people mm-hmm. just are attracted to, not in a physical way, but just like want to be right, around right, right. you all the time um, type thing. I mean, I, I do think that that probably would be a trait of some really good leaders that, because ultimately I don't really care if I'm the one that gets the, like, I, I don't want to be the, and this is no offense to anybody that does this, but mm-hmm. just wants to be the the local celebrity or something right. like that. Like, that's just not my personality. Like I would much rather know people, you know, shake their hand and stuff like that. But that that's not really my ultimate goal is to be that. Do I do stuff like that or do I do, you know, I love doing podcasting and stuff like this, but ultimately like, I mean, I do that stuff to market our business and right. for people to, to know who we are. It's not to market and be like, oh, look at me. I'm, you know, this X, Y, and Z. Personally, I've, I've never wanted to be the person that whenever somebody thinks of me, the first thing that they think of is insurance. Uh, I mm-hmm. kind of said the same thing when I was playing football, like football was not who I am. It's just what I played. Like my identity is not wrapped up in that. That's not who I am as a person. Is it what I'm doing? Yeah, absolutely. Now in that same breath, when somebody thinks of in- insurance, I hope that they think of me when they need insurance. I hope that right. I'm the first person they think of, but I never want to be that. Oh, here comes Chris again. He's trying <laughs> to sell me insurance. Like that's, that's never going to be me. That's not my personality. Yeah. Whatsoever. No offense to anybody that does that. Yeah, There's right. some people that are really successful and do that, but that's just not what I'm trying to to do. Well, I think, you know, if there's one lesson that I hope people take away from these podcast episodes is, I mean, we've done 60 something, you know, ep- interviews up until this point, And every one of those people had a unique story. And every one of those people was a leader in their own unique way, even though some didn't recognize it. And so the point, I guess, I'm trying to, to make, and I guess the point of this entire podcast is that everyone is a leader in some area, in some regard. I mean, regardless of, is, you know, if they're a mom that's the CEO of their household or if they're just a one man, you know, insurance shop or whatever. I mean, there are still leadership aspects that um, everyone uh, has in their daily lives and and you just got to look for them, you know, so. Absolutely. I would agree with that 100%. And I think to to add on that too, I mean, I think that there's thousands of different types of leaders and there's not just one exact formula to success as a leader. I mean, ultimately, I think that there are some common threads. I mean, I think that you could agree with that is mm-hmm. with interviewing multiple different types of leaders. There's common threads that you kind of see running through each person. But for example, you know, another guy that's in insurance that I uh, admire a lot and has been extremely helpful in me starting this business is Bradley Flowers. He, mm-hmm. you know, does his podcast in here as well. But we have similar, a lot of similar traits, but our business model is a little bit different. Right. You know, same thing as Andy, my former boss. He his model is a little bit different than mine. I mean, not that there's one simple serum for success. I mean, I think that there's multiple different ways to get to success, but every leader has a few common thread aspects. Yeah. yeah agreed. So as we start to wrap up, um, you mentioned the um, shoe dog book by Phil Knight, which I, I'm going to go out and, and get today, by the way, and, and start reading. But, um, and you also mentioned podcasting. I know that you have a podcast yourself, right? I do. Yes, do. we do. USA it's me. Football. And, yeah, it's, it's primarily, we've put it on hold for a little bit right now. Okay. So with, with just starting LTN and my buddy, uh, JT Crabtree is his name. He is one of the play by play guys for South. Okay. Um, he's got a really, really cool story himself. He's a student, student worker. Now he's one of the voices of the Jags and does a a lights out job. But anyways, they're in what they call crossover season. So they've got softball, baseball, men's and women's basketball. So they've got everything going on, everything going on. So we said, Hey, we'll put this on pause and and pick it back up in the spring. But yes, it's called inside Jag nation. Um, And we take a look at players, current players, current coaches, former coaches, you know, former players and 
current administrators and just kind of pull back the veil and say, hey, we want to get to know you a little bit more than just your accolades. Uh, one of the questions that we kind of like to ask everybody is what's your what's your definition of success mm -hmm. um, to just kind of get to know them a little bit more. But, yeah, there's a shameless plug for <laughs> for our podcast. Very good. Well, so obviously you're, you're a podcast guy. So other than playing above the line, obviously, which should be on heavy rotation for everybody. Um, any other podcast you can point to that you that you really enjoy? Yeah, absolutely. I love listening to Bradley Flowers and Scott Howes. They, you know, record in this same studio, the Insurance Guys podcast. They do a great job, not even just from an insurance perspective, but from just a business perspective in general. Um, I try and listen to, I, I like Jason Wills as well. I like anything that has to do with local business because okay. I feel like there's a lot that you can learn from that. Another one is a mobile business podcast that Marcus Neto and Bluefish put on. I think that they do a lights out job as well. I just enjoy hearing local people's stories because I feel like sometimes when you hear, you know, you can learn a lot from the CEO of Shell or mm -hmm. something like that. Mm -hmm. But I feel like I learn and can just relate so much more to local people and to local business owners because they're going through the same exact struggles that we are. Yeah, very good. I like that. All right. So as I let you go, I've got to ask one little, you know, fluff question, nothing, nothing serious. So you're a big football guy, obviously played football and, uh, and, and still are involved with the USA football. So you had the opportunity to, to see one, one player play in person, live or dead, current or, or former, uh, who would that be? Wow. That is a great question. Man, if I thought you were going to ask me one game, and I would have, I knew that well, right off can, the top of my well, head. All right, go that. The go game that is the Army Navy game. I okay. wanna, that's on my bucket list. I want to see that more than I want to see any Super Bowl. Really? Something about that game and just the aspect of it, and just kind of the pageantry of it right. is just. Uh, I mean, we played when I was at South. We played in front of you know Nebraska. Played at Tennessee. Played at South Carolina. San Diego State. Hawaii. Mississippi State, we played at Navy, and it was by far my favorite. Like, as far as a stadium experience, mm -hmm. by far my favorite. Very Something cool. about just the like the fact we're playing these men, and they may go to war for our country in two months, was just a really sombering feeling. And they waxed us. I mean, they beat us by, <laughs> they beat us by like 25 points that game. That was in 2013. That game is definitely number one up there. If you had to ask me one specific player – I would love to just get be a fly on the wall and watch Tom Brady prepare mm. for a game. Mm -hmm. um, I think would that would be really cool to just kind of see the behind the veil of what he does as far as watching film and how he breaks all that stuff down. That would be really interesting to me. So I, I would say Tom Brady, I guess. Very good, very good. Well, Chris, thanks. I mean, this is you've had um, there have been lots and lots and lots of great little tidbits of information and insight and we appreciate you uh, taking time out of your busy schedule to come join us if you want to learn more about ltn insurance services you can visit their website ltnins.com and then we're going to link all of your personal information and additional business information as far as social media and that kind of thing in the show notes and so folks can go there and, and learn more about you and what you do so uh chris thanks a lot this has been great yeah absolutely i really appreciate you guys having me here i was telling carrie when we talked a couple of weeks back i think that you guys have a really interesting podcast because as we were talking earlier when you were in high school, you know, not to, not to age you and not to, to right. age me, but I was Seven just being ago. born. <laughs> so I think that you guys have a really unique perspective on leadership and the aspect of a lot of people's podcasts that I listen to. Uh, a lot of them are younger. So mm -hmm. it, I think that you guys have a really cool perspective of seeing a business, you know, being in business for a really mm -hmm. long time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm just getting started. So I, I greatly appreciate what you guys are doing. Well, I appreciate that. And, 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 you know, we hope that people pick up a little something along the way. And uh, but they definitely have in this episode. So thanks a lot. We appreciate that. Thank you. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. And if you did, be sure to rate, review, and subscribe on iTunes and Spotify. It definitely helps us in the ratings, and it also makes it easier for other folks to find the podcast. As always, a big thanks to producer Kerry Wolf and editor Johnny Gwynn. Playing Above the Line is sponsored by Aviso Group. If you want to know more about who we are and what we do, you can visit our website at avisogroup.com. That's A-V-I-Z-O group.com. You can also check us out on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Thanks for listening.